I'm 52-year-old Nathan, and I lost my first wife 10 years ago. Ella and Lily, the two girls, were 24 and 21 years old at the time. After almost three years, life continued on. Luna, my present spouse, is 38 years old. Met fairly innocently. In essence, I kept running into her in different parts of the city. Never truly exchanged words. We would occasionally make eye contact, point at one another from a distance, and simply grin. Then having my car fixed one day. As hers was being worked on, she entered the waiting area. Thus, we finally had a lengthy discussion. Because service centers were awful, we went across the street to get actual coffee. After an hour of conversation, my page was sent. I inquired if she wanted to discuss some more over lunch one day. We agreed on a day to meet and swap numbers. After two years together, we got married. Her two boys are 14-year-old Ethan and 10-year-old Noah. After three years of living with her parents, they moved into my house. My girls adored her, not as a stepmother, but as a big sister. Even yet, having a second adult living with two teenage daughters was a blessing. Life is magnificent. I treat those boys as though they were my own. When they are old enough to make independent decisions, I want to adopt them. My child refers to me as dad. It was uncomfortable for the oldest. I gave him my first name, telling him to call me by that. The girls addressed her by name. Mom stays at home with her wife. We made a decision before the kids adjusted. She currently volunteers at school lunches and other events but does not wish to work. One daughter graduates and heads off to college. This morning was the younger daughter's graduation. This weekend, we are transferring the remainder of her belongings. I was informed that her ex-partner left them around the time of the second child's birth and hasn't gotten in touch with her since. Her mother is lovely, but she keeps her distance from me. He is a dog with alpha status. He probably didn't want anyone else to look after his daughter's only child and his grandchildren. I was not much younger than them, I was too old, and he would chastise me for it. This would occur whenever I was in their presence. Since I don't like confrontation, I told my wife that I would just avoid them. Since they just live a few blocks apart, I did encourage her to keep dating. Her ex shows up again in February of this year and wants to be a part of their lives. At best, he is hazy. This is something I can't refuse. He begins to appear frequently. We are able to moderate his visitation, however, I have set a boundary that he can only visit on the weekends in order to avoid interfering with school. Though we attempt to give him space, he comes most weekends and doesn't actually spend much time alone with the kids. I inquired with his wife if he paid any child support throughout his absence. No. I advised her to question him about turning over rights so I could adopt and to talk to him about paying off whatever he owes. She promised to speak with him. March R6, life's first phase begins to plunge. I assume you can see where this is going. However, I am unaware of this. I told my wife, but she made the same old excuses. Small details about the house seem different, I've noticed. My favorite munchies are no longer available. I'm not a heavy drinker, I just have the occasional beer here and there, but I miss a few. The most significant, though, was that I could smell garbage. My spouse was asked if she was smoking. She hasn't, just as we don't. I believe the now, 14, year, old to be. Advised that we speak with him. She claims that she could manage it. A 14-year-old asked me about two weeks ago if I loved my mother. I assumed he had a girlfriend when I said yes. It's time to chat, yes. He claims that we were constantly sitting next to each other and making some sort of physical contact. He felt happy about this. Does mom love her dad? He wonders. Sure, she does on some level, I replied, but why ask? In response, he says that they are always caressing, talking, and staring at one another. 
and he is constantly over. I inquired as to what he meant by every time. He is there almost every day when kids get home from school before leaving. He is visiting that weekend, so I'm in the living room. He enters and takes a seat across from me, holding a beer. Raising my gaze from my book, I tell him to have a beer on his own. He remains silent. I inquired as to why he wasn't with the kids because I heard them laughing in the family room. He hinted that he might go in a moment. I promise him that I won't drink in front of the children. I hold off until after they've gone to bed. He remains silent. You know I am here for her, he continues. What does that mean? You're referring to my spouse. He claims that, even though he never signed divorce papers, he is still legally married to her. Since he was nowhere to be located, I am aware that a judge approved the divorce. That's why the divorce process took longer. I ultimately inquired about child support because I never received a response. He only gave me a quick glance before telling me he had caught up and given her $15,000 in cash. How in the hell? I never asked, but I wondered then if she had discussed giving up rights with him. What would it be worth to me? He inquired. You had to be kidding, I responded, you would sell your children. I instructed him to go before he could respond. The children were visiting their grandparents with their wives on Sunday of this past week. I purchased and set up a camera. I placed it above the television. Really little. It looks out into the living room and front door. Triggered by motion. All is normal until Wednesday morning, at 10 a.m. My phone alerts me when the camera starts up. As I am working, I receive a notice. I think the wife is tidying up. I still take a look. He returns. They have a long kiss when she lets him. He begins to seize her. She shoes away in jest. They are silently chuckling. He's seated on the sofa. She gets him some nibbles and a beer. 10 a.m. She vanishes. A few minutes later, she returns wearing a different outfit. She's having lunch at the school. They are giggling, grasping, shoving, and talking more. After a short while, she gets up and gets ready to go. He stands up, takes her once again, makes a few gestures, and then strikes a position where his hands are joined in prayer. They take a seat again, and she hands him her head. After finishing, she leaves the area. Returns, says something, and walks away. After that, he watches TV before dozing off. Eventually, the screen becomes blank. Another alarm just after 1 p.m. She's at home. They converse. Both of them make space. They're on their way to the bedroom, I know. I find them as I dash home. They didn't hear me approaching. The expected hysterics are present. He slithers away. I tell her to go out. She begs that he was just making a one-time error and had just arrived. Because we weren't having sex or anything, she felt lonely. I gave BS a call. I inquired as to whether he just visited on the weekends. This was not typical. I played the clip of him dozing off. She asked, saying he was exhausted. I then gave her the BJ. She was at a loss for words. I told her to get ready since I was leaving. We were having problems, so I left and asked her father to come take them in. Naturally, he took the lead and told me how I would make a mess of things. I was unable to say anything. I finally got him to quit. When I asked again, he responded yes and then resumed his flirting. I promised to send him something because I had had enough. I sent BJ the edited version of the video. He should watch and let me know if I was mistaken. I informed him. Never received a response. Spoke with a lawyer on Thursday. With his first marriage, he assisted with the estate plan. Suggested a partner of mine for family legal work. Divorce will occur on Tuesday, when we meet. 
He had a feeling, but he wasn't positive, that I would be responsible for providing child support. None, because she violated our prenuptial agreement. Before I got married, I set it up along with a state plan to keep my girls safe. I'm happy to help and don't care about the support. The boys are involved. Thus, I would like to know whether anyone else has gone through a divorce and been allowed to see their ex's children, even though they are not your own. How went that? The 14-year-old is somewhat at risk because he will be in HS the following year. I don't want him to become like his dad and go down the drain. I appreciate your understanding, it's been a busy week. Son's graduation took place over the weekend. She moves back, the kid starts sports, the lawyer meets, and the wife sits down. I'll do my best to keep it brief. This is the third time I have written it. I'm always trimming it back because of its length. I had a Tuesday meeting with my attorney. We talked about my goals for the project. I told him how much I wished to be involved with the boy. So be it, if that means staying married. I no longer trust the woman, but I still love her. He counseled against continuing the marriage since, in his opinion, it would be a sham. Overall, the boys would have a miserable marriage. It is the prenuptial agreement that will stand. The wife has no right to assistance. He recommends that we collaborate to develop a visitation schedule that benefits us both. It will be up to me to pay child support. But once more, the court will view anything we manage positively. He continued by saying that there have been instances where judges have decided that a stepparent who has supported a child for a lengthy period of time should be responsible for paying child support. Although he didn't believe that was how the judges in our local courts had ruled, it might happen in the future. Things will get more difficult if she hires an attorney. Still, it was resolved prior to then. He informs me that they discuss fresh and forthcoming cases at their weekly partner meeting. My first lawyer specialized in estate preparation and elder law. Family law is what my new lawyer does. The others commit crimes and are liable. Following the meeting, criminal defense lawyer C. A. enters his office and informs him that the $15,000 in overdue child support didn't seem reasonable. The sum is quite similar to what the former partner ought to have paid. He wondered how someone from the middle class could afford that much money. The CA placed a call to a contact in the county prosecutor's office. It turns out that the ex-husband and father never left their home, he was incarcerated on medical charges. He was involved in a federal lawsuit. Three years ago, when the federal government was releasing non-violent inmates to relieve overcrowding, he was granted early release. The CIA seems to believe that he returned to his former career, but I'm not sure if they are still interested in him. After double-checking, they are really divorced. So our meeting is scheduled for this Thursday. The father-in-law and wife visit the home. It was really uncomfortable. I still wasn't sure what to do until the Tuesday meeting. I began by announcing that I would be recording the meeting to ensure that the events were not misunderstood. They both concurred. I questioned her about seeing a lawyer. She didn't. I told her that because there would be a divorce, she should obtain one. The room became silent after hearing that comment. The wife requests that we have a few minutes to talk alone before moving on. I concurred. She requests our space from her father-in-law. She began to apologize. I interrupted her. Excuses were not what I wanted. I informed her that she had betrayed my confidence by lying to me in addition to cheating. How, she inquired. She doesn't realize how much more I know than she does. I anticipated that she would continue to lie. I inquired as to why she had never told me about the 15 million. She paused to reflect. She never owned so much money at once and preferred to keep it to herself. She had the money still. I inquired whether she wondered where it originated. X showed up because he realized he owed her and the children something and that was when he had enough. 
she has been lying from the beginning. I told her that I was aware of the dark family secret. X was behind bars. I inquired as to his whereabouts over the three years following his discharge. Had they had a meeting? I knew she was stunned. However, I could tell by the expression on her face that she had not known for three years. Late in January, he got in touch with her. We talked about Martinez's desire to give me the boys in exchange for him giving up his parental rights. She says she's unaware of this. How long have you been having sex? The one time, she said. I gave BS a call. I informed her that I had the camera ready for a little while. I played her a film in which she dusted the TV and didn't even realize there was a camera on top. Though it wasn't large, it was clearly visible. Even though I had the camera for only a few days, I decided to go with it anyway. She mistook it for a component of the video game system. Then she acknowledged that it began in March. Two complete months. Thus, she had deceived me once more. We then summoned the father-in-law back in at this time. We went on to what I really wanted, the lads, when I had had enough of the falsehoods. We are now recording. They both protest, but in the end, we agree that the boys can stay with her and come over any time they please. I would stay in their lives and give them what I thought was right. I didn't expect her to rely on me for assistance, I expected her to go back to work. I reminded her that she had broken the principle. I told her that she couldn't force the boys to ask for things because they would be upfront with me if I asked if they were forced to do so in order to receive something from me. I did remark that, given her age, I knew she would ultimately find another man and that once I believed he had the boy's best interests at heart, I would not cause any trouble. By then, kids might have moved past the phase of confusion and be prepared to choose how they will respond to a new stepdad. Finally, Redditors, my spouse and I are both ardent fans of various subreddits. Many evenings, we read our favorites and shared them with each other side by side. After reading my post, she deduced from my descriptions that it was indeed me. She observed your responses. She read all of your responses and remarked on how you had attacked her, even though I wish I could have used the majority of them. I'm grateful. Martinez, you did a fantastic job handling the situation. She is going to pay for what she did. She made errors and purposefully took this route over and over. I understand the difficulties you're going through. You have admirable traits. Unlike the current circumstances, you'll be a great mentor and father to someone who values and appreciates you. Her decisions will have long-lasting effects, and she will regret them for the rest of her life. She made repeated deliberate decisions with knowledge, only pausing when caught. To heal your wounded heart, set aside time for introspection, and become the true father these kids so richly deserve, think about counseling. And definitely require. I wish you luck and perseverance. We were dating for almost six years before our June 2021 marriage to my ex-wife. It was difficult to get married during a pandemic. However, our wedding was amazing, and it was one of my best days ever. A few months later, my wife had undergone a radical transformation. She made the decision to consistently work from the office, while I kept working from home. During the epidemic, we both worked from home. Because she worked for a large company, the extra hours seemed normal. However, she started to minimize my accomplishments, saying I was no longer a go-getter, even though I was succeeding at work, and she stopped wanting to spend special time with me on the weekends in favor of spending a lot of time with her horse. The first year of marriage is often described as challenging. In an attempt to revive our marriage, I began bringing my wife out on regular date evenings. However, she continued to be distant and critical, which seriously damaged my self-worth. I searched my mind for any possible explanation for why she would act and feel in this manner. However, I was unable to think of anything believable. I therefore began to have sleep problems since I thought I would lose my wife to someone else. I couldn't believe you could lose the person you married so soon after the wedding, 
which made them the saddest months of my life. I so persuaded myself that the stress of her work was the reason behind her behavior, and I chose to ignore the unfavorable ideas in order to prevent making our problems worse. I was simply unaware that she had been gaslighting me the entire time. Day D. Against my better judgment, I planned a romantic beach weekend to try and rekindle our relationship before we got married. I had hoped that this would strengthen our relationship, but her contempt just grew bolder. On our drive to supper, I told her I loved her, but she didn't say it back. She also asked me to shoot a risky picture of her in a bubble bath later that evening. She also said, that's not what I'm using it for, in response to my comment that it was a little too scandalous for social media. Despite our long history of intimacy, she declined to have an intimate relationship with me while we were traveling. At that point, I approached her about my suspicions and asked her to be truthful with me. She initially disputed everything, but when I persuaded her that I had evidence, which I didn't, she eventually admitted it. She said that her boss had been pressing her to leave him and that she had been having multiple sexual encounters with him for months. I had a panic attack, something I had never done before. And when I eventually calmed down, I saw how foolish she had been to believe his falsehoods. She said, she'll find out, but you won't be the one to tell her, in response to my telling her that I would let his wife know. That's when I realized my ex-wife had made up her mind to flee with her boss. My ex-wife was never the person I married, and it was sick and even a touch nasty. This depraved and cunning stranger was the real her. That evening, she rescheduled my flight, dropped me off at my parents' place, and promised to mail me a few boxes of clothes. As soon as I arrived at the airport, I messaged the boss's wife on social media, and that's when everything went crazy. To cut a long tale short, the boss never intended to leave his family, and he tried to keep his marriage intact by putting as much distance between himself and my ex-wife as possible. It seems that HR had to step in, and my ex-wife became well-known in her workplace very quickly. She sobbed and begged me to take her back, but I assured her that I was only carrying out her plan, she had made the decision. Success is the finest retaliation, after all. Now that the dust has settled, life is good. I met a fantastic girlfriend, found a terrific job in California, and now live close to some of my closest friends. I'm rediscovering how to love myself, and I've come to the conclusion that my ex-wife's perception of me from our marriage does not represent who I am or my intrinsic worth. I'm genuinely happier now that she's gone, and even though I get sad sometimes about what happened, I consider myself fortunate that this realization occurred before we had children. If you could explain the procedure you used, it would be incredibly beneficial for some of us. You seem to have been able to separate from your relationship quite swiftly and with little harm. Even after a year, the majority of us here are still in shock. Even if it's difficult and the suffering persists, you must put your attention on bettering yourself in every way you can. Exercising, improving one's diet, going on adventures, and spending more time with loved ones. All of it assisted me in overcoming the trauma. In an effort to locate fresh employment prospects, I even put a lot of effort into improving my resume and making connections. Not because I didn't like my last job, but because I was hoping for a whole overhaul. I threw all of my energy into my new work in an attempt to fit in and get my mind off the hurt. Even though I still occasionally have problems falling asleep, as I became healthier and happier, I radiated confidence and drew others to me. The finest response you can give in these awkward circumstances is one of development and maturation. People will begin to admire you for a characteristic they were unaware you had if you demonstrate to them that your ex does not define you. Everything takes time, and I can assure you that the beginning was difficult for me. However, Take advantage of this chance to reinvent yourself and grow. What became of the former spouse? Has she lost her job? Has the boss been fired? How is the boss doing? Is there a possibility that they will become partners? How did her friends and family respond to the revelation of her adultery? They will not ultimately be together. In order to shield the company from accountability, 
HR established guidelines that prevented them from working on cases together. But inevitably, my ex-wife moved out. And secured a job. I'm not sure what kind of story she made up for her family and friends, so I don't know how they responded. However, her father sent me a text message that was really sweet. That was an extremely bold move on his part. And I sincerely appreciate his generosity. My cheating spouse and I have been apart for well over a year now. Furthermore, her family and extended family never said anything to me, which still annoys me. When I initially found out, I texted her father, and he replied, but that was all. I believed that I had positive relationships with several of them going back years. I'm wondering if this is common for those who have been deceived. I want to be clear that there is no desire to keep up a relationship with any of them, based on some of the comments. I'm done with that phase of my life. It astonished me that, upon learning of the betrayal, they chose not to send condolences. Just interesting facts you discover about adultery. I'm happy to see that you've made progress and prevented her from declaring triumph, OP families would often rather stay out of these kinds of disputes. Family members may have ties to their former partner for the rest of their lives, regardless of the reasons. Even though they may personally sympathize with you, in public they will probably support their biological relationship. It is possible that the family member is offering an explanation for the adultery. My friend, you deserve to be happy. I wish you luck and perseverance. I've been with my wife for 12 years, but we've been together for 14. Before her affair, our marriage was fine, great even at times. While I won't claim that our marriage was flawless, it wasn't, I can't think of anything I did in the past that would have made her affair acceptable. I acknowledge that, like most married couples, there have been moments when I've spent too much time on our children or at work and not enough time on her. However, I wasn't an awful spouse by any means. She began having an affair with her co-worker in October of 2018. This was the beginning of their sexual affair, though she had been having an emotional affair with him for longer. She ended their relationship in May 2019, after their affair had lasted that long. Then, in July 2019, she told me everything. She claims that although she knew what she was doing was wrong, she always told herself that it didn't matter because she no longer cared about our marriage. I could see she was becoming more distant from me when I urged her to attend counseling with me. And our connection had stopped. When she realized in April 2019 that I was still genuinely concerned about her, she started to feel bad and ultimately ended things. She acknowledges that at first she had no intention of telling me about the affair, but that she felt horrible about it as well, to the point where in July she thought she would lose it if she didn't confess. My situation deteriorated upon discovering the affair. I wanted to be away from her, but I didn't move out for the benefit of our children. We didn't talk much unless it was about the kids. There was no tenderness. Although I didn't want to divorce her, I couldn't seem to go past her infidelity. She apologized again, said she would stop at nothing to save our marriage, and even suggested that I consider having an affair if it would help. I eventually understood that I had to leave this state of uncertainty. I had to put our marriage first or get a divorce from her. To see if our marriage might be saved, I made the decision to at least try. Primarily because, despite her initial plans to keep the affair a secret from me, she made the decision to be honest, and I saw it as evidence of her sincere regret. 2019 was able to get underway. However, I told her that I felt like I was wasting my time since I didn't think it was working. She pleaded with me to continue attending therapy and once more urged me to sleep with someone if it would help me feel better. This time, I gave it more thought than the first time she brought it up. And the more I considered it, the more I believed that unless I shared a bed with someone else, I would not be able to go past this. Although it wasn't a healthy attitude in retrospect, that's how I felt at the time. I made the decision to accept her offer of a pass sometime in January of this year. My wife's only requirement, when I told her, was that I continue attending counseling. February is when I met my partner. 
She really is amazing. I originally thought we would have a brief affair, but it has developed into much more. We seem to get along better than my wife and I did. She has been incredibly compassionate and aware of my circumstances. It was only recently that she told me she wanted more. She's not simply interested in having sex with me. She's hoping we become a couple. I feel the same way, in part. It's true that I've pondered what life might be like if we were together. In ways that I might no longer be able to be happy with my wife, I believe we could be really happy together. The prospect of starting again is incredibly alluring. However, I'm not sure whether this is how I'm thinking about it. I have the impression that I'm slipping into the delusion that the grass is always greener. We've hardly had the opportunity to get to know one another. We are in a much better place now that my wife has put in a lot of effort to keep our marriage intact. I believe our marriage can be saved, and I see a future with each other for the first time since I found out about the affair. We can be happy again, though I doubt I'll ever be able to move over the affair completely. That's the problem I have. My kids would fare better if I became their mother. If they learn how our relationship began and I leave her for my partner, they might even start to despise me. My primary focus is on my relationship with my children. Conversely, I'm curious about the kind of relationship I can have with my wife. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure how I'll be able to trust anyone going forward. I'm not entirely certain I want to spend the rest of my life carrying around all of that baggage. Of course, there's no assurance that the new partnership will succeed, so it's possible that I'm wasting my time in my marriage. I have no idea what to do. I see, Martinez. Your wife's suggestion that you have sex with another lady was just another conceited attempt to ease her guilt. It is totally up to you whether to stay in the relationship or end it. It is not a workable solution to continue a marriage for the children's sake alone. These kinds of unions don't usually last. An unhappy dynamic usually results when one partner stays in the relationship only to raise their children and for no other reason. Make taking care of yourself a priority for the kids' well-being. Children are happier when their parents are happy and pleased.